Hey y'all, it's Grizz here at Windmill Farms, North Mississippi. Y'all come on and join us on the adventure this week as we take a look at the Smith & Wesson Model 44 uh, Special. Uh, this is once again a customer of mine brought it to me uh, to clean up. Uh, also to uh, do, um, I've noticed some things in I want to show y'all in case you're out shopping for a used handgun something to look for no matter how well they try to dress up the outside these are little things most folks overlook and kind of gives you an idea of how rough the gun has been treated or how well the gun's been treated so y'all come on and join me this week on this venture while we look at the smith and wesson 44 special all right all right y'all welcome back um this is the 696 smith and wesson 44 special um, if you look at this side of the gun, I'll try to turn it different angles so that the light can hit it. Man, this gun looks good on this side, don't it? Alright. By the way, so y'all know that I'm not having a pistol sitting around that's loaded. I'll show y'all that. Alright. On this side... Notice the scratching and pitting here. Now that's scratching and pitting on a stainless steel gun, okay? Now, granted, something could have happened and that might have been a one-time thing, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a little bit of pitting. I, I don't know if you can see the pitting. This is where the gun actually probably laid on the seat. Um, I know some rubbing and scarring on the cylinder where it was probably down. But one of the biggest key, someone can polish up a gun real well. One of the very few places that they actually clean up, and you can tell if a gun's been sitting up somewhere and it's just gotten a whole bunch of just trash on it. I'm gonna try to turn that so y'all can see. Look down in here in the where the uh, bolt holds the uh, hoe grip on. Look on this other side right here. Full of dirt trash i mean it's just full of everything y'all that tells me that this gun and it, it i looked inside the cylinder i mean inside the riflings and stuff gun hasn't been fired at over abundant time and that's a good thing it's it's the gun i already fired it once just to make sure that it worked uh it is a 44 special and not a 44 magnum uh big difference in how you do the loading but let me get this out of the hoe grip. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all can see it or not. I'm going to try to touch the camera here. And that didn't help much. Anyway, it is real hard to tell right there. But I'm telling y'all right now, that thing is... Well, you can see it a little bit right there. That is full of crud and everything else. Okay? So I'm kind of... Uh, <laughs> Kind of apprehensive about opening this thing up to see what it really looks like on the inside. Um, these are Uncle Mike hoe grips. They're not true hogs. They're Uncle Mike's. Um, there's a little bit of trash around the edge. Uh, nothing real bad. Nothing I won't be able to get out. Let's go ahead and pull the cylinder out. If y'all hadn't seen my other videos, the way you pull a cylinder out of a Smith & Wesson, this is the cylinder lock nut right here. You basically just take that and you take that screw out and when you do, your cylinder will be able to come out on the bottom side, okay? Now, I'm one of those people that which I, I have a certain way I put my nuts back into my box over here. So, And there it comes out. That's it. That's it. Once you pull that screw all the way out, this will you you pop it out of the cylinder, the cylinder out of the frame, wiggle it back and forth to about 45 degree angle, and she comes right on out. Like I said, overall, y'all, if y'all look up in this gun, there's not a lot of uh, pitting. Um, the rifling looks very very good. It's dirty up in there, but overall, the rifling looks good. Um, the gun overall, for being a gun from 90. I want to say, I hadn't looked this serial number up yet, but it's a it's a starts with a C and it's a 696-1, uh, which means it's the first run of the 696 and the CD 99, 1999. I might be off on my numbers if I am. If you're a Smith and Wesson expert, call me out on it, please. 
Um, I think that's about where that came in at. Uh, I'm probably wrong. But anyway, y'all, you can pull your cylinder out there. We're going to polish that up, even though, although overall, she spins, she spins fairly well. A um, little bit of polishing, a little bit of just cleaning, nothing major. I should be able to get that. Not a problem there. You know what I'm saying? So, I, look, the ejector aspect of it works fine. It's a little, um, a little sticky. I'll throw some cleaner off in it. I don't really see a reason to actually break this down, pull that all apart. Um, it's not like it's overly sticking or anything. It's uh, feels dry, really. Um, so I'm gonna take care of that. I'll 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 lube that up. Actually, that's real dry. So that's probably more what it is. After I polish that and get it back together. Um, This one's got the red ramp, the white outline. Um, once again, like with most Smith & Wessons, you can do a slight adjustment on your trigger pull in single action only right here. Uh, the uh, hoe grips, actually, on, and unlike the uh, wooden grips, cover that up so you can't do it with them on. You actually have to take them off. You can adjust that. I will actually be... Um, I will actually be probably adjusting that a little bit for them. Um, We'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, we're going to pull the side plate off like we've done before, all right? All right. <clears throat> I wasn't going to show you taking the side plate off. I did that on other videos. I'm going to hold it together, show it to you. Overall, um, not bad. Not as bad as I was expecting it to be. There's a little bit of trash and gum. Most of it's around the edges where stuff got uh, underneath. But overall, not bad. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, I'm kind of actually, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised it looks that good. Uh, apparently, the wear and tear on the outside was simply from bouncing around in someone's truck. On you know, it's what it looks like to me. So, uh, all the maker's marks inside are matching up. This gun's a 100 complete uh, solid gun. If you're wondering what I'm talking about. There's numbers. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's kind of hard. I'm trying to. Right there. You can barely see it right there. And then there's, once again. You see it when I'm turning it right there. See the numbers? And then there's a number on the bottom down here. Everything's matching up. Uh, which is a good thing. I always look for that. Just make sure it's not a Frankenstein, something somebody throw together. So I'm basically going to wipe this gun out. Nothing major. It's a little dry on the inside, so when I get through wiping and cleaning it up a little bit, I'm going to throw a little bit of lube uh, in some key areas. You've seen this if you saw my six uh, Model 66 video. Uh, it's no sense to me, you know... Uh, boring you with the same old stuff again so let me get this done and we'll be right back all right all right y'all i'm back all i did was when i got done cleaning it out i polished it up a little bit uh greased it like i told you i was going to closed her back up i did adjust the trigger it's just like it is on the 66 that's about a two pound trigger i really need to yeah i really need to get a trigger pull gauge that's probably going to be one of my next things to get but as y'all see remember how pitted this side was everything there is still if you can see it there's still a little bit right there that is actually down in i mean it is actually like down in it um <clears throat> what i did was i polished it out the best i could now <clears throat> that i'm talking about the polish let me back up and explain something y'all know that i use the flits I use flits to give a, a, a firearm, especially stainless steel, a nice look when I'm done. It's just a, a very, very, very fine abrasive. It's just enough to give it a nice shine. What I had to do here and here, I used an old trick that I learned years ago and I learned it myself. Um, piece of leather, jeweler's rouge. 
This is the same thing that I do. I put Jewelers Rouge on leather to sharpen my knife because it polishes the knife. That's actually how a leather knife stays sharp is it's polished. It's not actually sharpened. I learned years ago that if I put a little bit on a good piece of leather and I give it a good buff, that it will take it out most of the time. As y'all see, and even the, the rough part there that was there before, as y'all can see, it's still there. But what happened was, was when you run your finger across it, there is no thing. Now, as y'all see, that gun looks a lot better. Sounds, feels a lot better. I got all the trash and stuff out of it. She's been cleaned up. She's still unloaded, so y'all will know. All right. Um, oh, <laughs> I worked on that. I polished that out real good just so it would stay uh, polished out, uh, stay moving good. Uh, it needed a little bit of polishing. Uh, more than anything else, it just needed greasing. Um, the sights had some trash build up on them. I got that off. That wasn't a problem. Um, but overall, you can't miss do wrong with this gun here this is a nice nice little 44 special um i mean you just you can't go wrong with these smith and wessons i've never have I'm not saying look anything manufacturedly made or anything at all man made can go wrong something can something can fail something can break so I'm never saying I'm that nothing will ever fail, nothing will ever break. I'm just saying in my time, I've never had a situation where I've had a problem with one. Not saying they're out there. Um, so y'all, if you get a chance, shoot one of these little babies, shoot it. You'll enjoy it. I'm glad that y'all come along with this little adventure of just stripping this down for a friend of mine, seeing what all it had in it, and uh, putting it back together for him. Uh, I think he'll be happy. I've now got to make a holster for it. So we'll get a holster made up for it for him. Uh, he's left-handed. He's a wrong-hand guy. So uh, we'll get it done for him. And then uh, we'll get out of here. Well, maybe we'll have another gun next week for y'all. Uh, I'm going to tell y'all to have a blessed evening. I know I have. Uh, we made it through the storm that come through this area here recently. We made it with no problem. Um, well got struck. We got it back going. That's all that matters. So, all right, y'all. Y'all have a blessed evening. And as always, be safe.